They infiltrated ancient civilizations as objects of worship. They were hailed as all-seeing oracles and sacred offerings. Their bones fueled starving cities, their flesh-shaped diets worldwide. And today, billions perish each year in their industrialized ranks. This is no bird of prey or flight, it's the humble chicken. In this video, we'll trace the winding path of the planet's most populous bird and see how it ended up on nearly every dinner plate. So watch until the end. Greetings again, dear viewer, in a new episode of the Brain Fuel program. If I asked you, dear viewer, about the most common bird that lived on planet Earth, of course, dear viewer, chicken is an excellent answer. Allow me, dear viewer, to tell you that the number of chickens exceeds the number of humans several fold. If the number of humans is estimated at 8 billion, the number of chickens is estimated at 33 billion chickens, the most numerous animal used for food, except for marine creatures due to their small size. More than cows, goats, sheep and pigs. Even 33 billion is a very small number, as it refers to the number of live chickens only. One may ask how? I will tell you how. A writer named Eric Dorfman, who holds the position of statistician at the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations, was able through data analysis to determine that 66 billion chickens were produced globally in 2016. Here you might ask me, dear viewer, and say you said there are only 33 billion chickens. What about the other 66 billion? Where did they go? They went into your meal, dear viewer, and my meal. I estimate, dear viewer, that 99% of those watching this episode have tasted chicken at least once in their lives. Anyway, Dorfman continued his calculations and said that the average chicken production is approximately 8.82 chickens per person. Also allow me, dear viewer, to tell you that in 1961, chicken production was only one chicken annually per 400 people. Can you imagine the difference, dear viewer, from one chicken per 400 people to 8.82 chickens per person? Can you imagine the tremendous development that occurred in chicken production? Here is an even more astonishing fact. Current estimates indicate that 55 billion chickens are slaughtered or killed annually, apart from the number of live chickens. That is, 5,400,000 chickens are slaughtered every hour. That is 1,500 chickens per second. Here, dear viewer, you might ask me, what made the chicken production field reach these huge numbers? The truth is, there are many complex reasons. Of course, one of the viewers might say it is because chicken tastes delicious. You are right, dear viewer, that this may be one of the reasons, but there are many others. Allow me, dear viewer, to take a step back and tell you the story of the chicken from the beginning, and through our story we will look at the reasons that brought chicken production to where it is today. In 2007, there was a group of scientists analyzing something called collagen in a protein sample they found in a Tyrannosaurus rex fossil. The important thing is that by analyzing the sample they reached a strange conclusion, as the scientists stated verbatim can be remarkably similar to chickens. This dear viewer indicates that chickens are considered living dinosaurs. All birds are classified in the animal kingdom within a class or taxonomy called aves. That means the degree of kinship of chickens to dinosaurs is stronger than the kinship of dinosaurs to reptiles like crocodiles. Can you imagine that? For example, dear viewer, before I told you this information, if someone asked you which animal is closer to dinosaurs, a chicken or a crocodile, of course, dear viewer, you would choose the crocodile because of the formidable shape of crocodiles resembling dinosaurs. No, dear viewer, chickens are more closely related to dinosaurs. And most likely, if you had caught a dinosaur before, it would have tasted similar to chicken. The important thing is that all domestic chickens today, or what is called Gallus gallus gasticus, are descended from a species called red jungle fowl, which descends from a genus called Gallus that includes three other species besides red jungle fowl. The red jungle fowl is a very shy chicken. It may not appear to humans at all, and may be so shy that if you caught it in the wild it might die of fear alone. It still exists today in South Asia and parts of India, and one thing that distinguishes it from other birds is that it lays eggs every day during the egg-laying season. Of course, not every single day, but on average it can lay up to 250 eggs a year, which is a very dangerous trait, as scientists say it evolved, because it lives among bamboo plants that bear fruit once every few decades, dropping massive amounts of fruit on the ground all at once. So birds that lay eggs daily produce large numbers of eggs to feed on the large crop of fruit, and this is the relationship humans noticed. But what drew their attention was not the chicken or the eggs, but the rooster. The rooster that dominates a group of hens it controls and acts very aggressively if another rooster is nearby. 
It uses a sharp spur near its foot to drive away the other rooster. Here humans began hunting these birds, and the reason was not, as is often the case when humans hunt for food, but for sport, and thus was born one of the oldest known sports, starting 8,000 years ago cockfighting. It began in the Indus Valley civilization located in parts of Pakistan, India and Afghanistan, and domestic jungle cocks began to appear and spread to China and the Middle East. Dear viewer, the first chicken farm was in Iran, and this was in the second millennium BC. The reason was not food or sport, but because they worshipped chickens. Yes, dear viewer, the rooster was a sacred bird to a sect called Zoroastrians, because it crows at sunrise, which in their view symbolically represented the eternal struggle between light and darkness. The second station after that for chickens was entering the city of Yur, which was one of the greatest cities at that time, a city in Iraq. Here was a restful stage for chickens, as they were considered royal birds found in the king's lush garden. At that time their feathers were beautiful, not the white color known these days. In the mid-first millennium BC, the Egyptian king Taharqa invaded parts of Iraq, and the king returned to Egypt with a strange bird that had the ability to lay eggs every day. Here the Egyptians did something for the chicken that no one had done before. They realized this was a bird that laid eggs daily, and we want to increase the number of eggs. And because when there are 12 eggs, the hen sits on them for 21 days until the chicks hatch. If the eggs are fertilized, then they grow and become hens and lay eggs in an endless cycle. They would take the eggs from under the head of the egg. And they put the eggs in mud ovens to hatch. This was the first artificial incubator in human history, and this was 3,000 years ago. Strangely, this process was unknown and not famous in the world until a French scientist named Antoine Riomer said these artificial incubators were the pride of Egyptian civilization. The ovens consisted of two floors. The upper floor contained a smothered fire that relied on smoke, and the eggs were placed in baskets on the lower floor and turned on hot ash. This was the turning point for chicken to go from palace halls to dinner plates. It was a meal for the upper classes at that time. Although the artificial hatching method had not yet reached the Romans, but they did something more important, they invented the omelette, and in fact the Romans expanded chicken farms. They built chicken coops and surrounded them with fences and discovered diseases they could contract, taking care of them in an unprecedented way. Chicken farms gained great popularity in Rome, because chickens can eat anything like household food scraps or insects on the ground. But the Romans believed chickens could see the future. Dear viewer, I do not know why people gave chickens greater status than they deserved. If you know, please write to me in the comments below the video. I think it is because chickens have separate eyes. One eye focuses on food on the ground and the other focuses on the surroundings, so if there is danger it can escape. And the Romans considered this ability evidence that it saw the future, so they would consult it before any military campaign embarked. For example, when the commander Publius Clodius was fighting the Carthaginians and wanted to make a surprise attack on them from the sea, who did he consult, dear viewer? He consulted the sacred chicken, offering it food, and when it refused to eat and fled, it meant his military plan would fail. But Clodius carried out his plan anyway, and did not listen to the chicken, and said his famous phrase, since they do not want to eat, let them drink. Anyway, Clodius carried out his plan and was indeed defeated, and his fleet completely destroyed. And when he returned from battle and stood before the Senate for trial, he was punished, but the punishment was not for the defeat. He was accused of impiety and irreverence because he did not listen to the sacred chicken. The truth is that, from this point on, chickens spread very widely because of their great adaptability and became a major part of the cultures of many peoples. Like the Norse myths in Northern Europe, where the crowing of three roosters means Ragnarok, the violent events that include the Norse gods, one meaning of the word being the fate of the gods. And in Japan's Shinto religion, the rooster is associated with the goddess Amaterasu, their goddess of the sun and the universe. Even in pagan Europe, chicken eggs were part of spring celebrations then Christians used them at Easter, and they took on great religious symbolism. In the 9th century ad, Pope Nicholas I issued a decree to place rooster statues on church spires, because the rooster was a symbol of a religious event in which St. Peter played a role, where the rooster's crowing was a pivotal point that later became an important symbol. Although Pope Nicholas' decree did not last, the impacts of that decision remained, like rooster weather vanes that show wind direction. Anyway, chickens became very popular in the Middle Ages because they were relatively inexpensive and the costs of raising and caring for them were not high. But archaeology scholars noticed a very large increase in chicken bones from 900 AD to 1000 AD, which was caused by the emergence of a very powerful group of clergy called the Benedictine monks, 
who began imposing fasting laws that prohibited eating most livestock, but allowed eating poultry including chicken and eggs. In a 2017 study by Oxford University analyzing chicken bones during this period, they found that rapid genetic changes occurred in chickens as a result of artificial selection by humans based on desired breeds or desired traits in chickens. That is, humans began selectively breeding chickens based on desired traits such as chicken fatness, high egg production, degree of domestication and preferring less aggressive breeds. In his book, Why Did the Chicken Cross the World? Author Andrew Lawler answers this question simply humans took chickens everywhere because they are small, easy to carry on ships. And in the age of discovery, from the era of Magellan and Christopher Columbus, when you did not know where you were sailing to in the unknown, chickens were very suitable for this situation. Because one chicken could be one meal for everyone, whereas with cattle and livestock there was the problem of storing meat, as refrigeration did not exist yet, dear viewer. What you slaughtered had to be entirely consumed. Let me tell you another advantage of chicken, it is a bird that cannot fly or swim, so it cannot escape. And in fact, European explorers transported chickens everywhere in the world. Although there is a theory that chickens already existed in South America before Columbus, brought by settlers from Oceania, the idea is also that in North America, chicken was food designated for slaves, the only creatures they were allowed to own and raise, and they introduced the world's most important chicken dish fried chicken by cutting up the chicken and putting it in palm oil. According to many estimates, this dish was brought by blacks from West Africa, then it became a famous dish in the southern US states like Georgia and Kentucky. As for old Europe, chickens saved Britain. In the 19th century there was a huge famine, to the extent that this period was called the Hungry Forties, resulting from the potato blight. At that time London was the largest city in the world by population. A person worked all day and could barely provide food for his children. There were protests and strikes due to the high cost of living. Thomas Malthus then presented a theory that if the population is increasing and food resources are fixed, then a great catastrophe will occur due to food shortages, because all humans need a basic source of protein in order to sustain peace and prosperity. At the same time, the opium war between China and Britain had ended, and those returning to Britain brought back large breeds of chickens. And here an important idea emerged that crossbreeding European chickens with Asian chickens could lead to the emergence of a larger chicken breed, which would then be an economical and saving alternative. And at this point, dear viewer, a new phase in the life of chickens began, known as hen fever. Many breeds were intentionally or artificially selected by humans as a result of their desired traits and crossbreeding them. Here emerges the name of scientist Charles Darwin who had a theory can selection of breeds occur without human intervention. To prove his theory Darwin continued observing a large number of chicken breeds and noticed how crossbreeding occurred. And in fact humans began using technology to increase the number of chickens through incubators and these incubators were not similar to those of the ancient Egyptians. The process of operating them started with coal, then electricity to generate a suitable temperature for eggs, especially in the harsh northern winter. Here industrial chicken farms began to emerge, because chickens can live in very large groups without needing sunlight. But this model of industrial farms did not spread widely. What was very common before World War I was that women in America raised chickens in their homes with the aim of supplementing income, known as egg money. And in World War II, quantities of meat, dairy and eggs were rationed for American citizens so that they could be sent to the battlefields, but chicken was exempted. And so the demand for chicken became historic. And for the first time, chicken consumption by American citizens exceeded that of beef. But the problem was in the weight of the chickens people wanted chunky, fat chickens that could feed a family of four and be inexpensive. So in 1944, an official at a large chain called a P suggested holding a competition to find a large chicken breed. And indeed, dear viewer, the Chicken of Tomorrow contest emerged, sponsored by the US Department of Agriculture, or USDA. This contest indeed changed the world because it was basically the main reason for the shape of chicken known today. The chicken found in grocery stores these days, weighing 3 kilograms, it would have been impossible to find a chicken this size before 1950. And in fact, crossbreeding was not the only reason for increased chicken size, but the process of mixing antibiotics with chicken feed was an important factor in increasing chicken size, as was genetic engineering, all of which helped produce larger chickens. And in 2004, scientists were able to know all the genes of the chicken and identified that a certain gene called TBC1D1D1 controls the level of glucose metabolism, and if it was changed and modified in a certain way, the chicken would become fatter. 
They also discovered another gene called TSHR that was modified, which is responsible for thyroid hormone receptors, and by disabling this gene, the chicken will be able to lay eggs continuously. Currently, dear viewer, chicken has been divided into two types. The first is called the broiler. These chickens are raised solely for their meat. These chickens that we eat have not laid a single egg in their entire life. And because of their heavy weight, their internal organs like the heart and lungs lose function, and as a result they must be slaughtered when they reach 45 days old. Only 45 days despite the natural lifespan of a chicken being 3 to 7 years. 45 days. This chicken has never seen sunlight, hatched from an egg, then fattened up in 45 days, then slaughtered. As for the second type of chicken, the egg-laying chicken, their eggs are not fertilized by roosters because roosters, roosters have no role in the chicken industry. Male chicks are sorted and then disposed of, either shredded or suffocated with carbon monoxide gas. And when these egg-laying chickens start decreasing egg production, farm owners starve and deprive them of water for a long time, then provide them food and drink again, so the chickens' bodies respond by producing eggs again. Of course this type of chicken has its beak trimmed and lives its whole life in chronic pain until slaughtered. But the biggest suffering this type of chicken endures is that they live in factory farms in overcrowded spaces. The space available per chicken is 0.043 square meters, so all these chickens live in a place that fits 30,000 chickens, in a place devoid of sunlight and ventilation. As a result, the gases from the smell of the chickens and their droppings are very strong, to the extent that chickens develop a condition called blinding eye disease, caused by ammonia burns. Another danger of cramming chickens in such numbers is the spread of diseases between them, like Salmonella and Campylobacter. And indeed, dear viewer, in Pennsylvania in 1983 there was an outbreak of avian influenza. The real problem is that due to the massive and very large number of chickens, it has become difficult to identify new epidemics. Dear viewer, if mass death of chickens occurred and chickens disappeared from the world due to an epidemic, the economy would collapse, crises would emerge and many jobs would be lost. Most importantly, dear viewer, at the end of this episode, do not forget to watch the previous and upcoming episodes, check out the sources below the video and like and subscribe.